Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Nick, and I will be presenting today. OnBase Reporting Dashboards is the perfect tool to improve your business intelligence. Reporting Dashboards is a powerful business analytics tool that displays information stored in OnBase in a visual interactive way. The user interface is highly customizable and intuitive, providing convenient views into your organization's data through features such as full screen support, customizable themes, dashboard actions, and drill down support. With reporting dashboards, highly complex dashboards can easily be created using simple drag and drop functionality, quickly view and interpret relevant data, and make proactive business decisions with reporting dashboards. OnBase provides you a single point to create, view, and share critical business data containing both in OnBase and in other software solutions. We will demonstrate how to create a new dashboard, view it, and share it. We will also highlight the more than 45 Navient created reporting dashboards that provide critical OnBase processing and configuration information to demonstrate some of the reporting dashboard opportunities. By the end of this information packed webinar, you will want to use only one reporting tool in the future. OnBase reporting dashboards. Before we dive into the webinar, on behalf of the customer care group, I just want to again welcome you to today's presentation. Here's a snapshot of the team's composition. Not pictured here are our three recent additions to the support team that you will be meeting soon. You have from left to right, Chuck Hamby, Dave Dodge, James Ondek, Jennifer Hanquinet, who has recently moved on to the architect position, Jennifer Siegel, Terry Starkey, Drew Bolak, myself, Nick Albanese, and our supervisor, Paul Kegler. Now, some quick housekeeping notes during the webinar. The audience will be muted. However, the chat will be available for comments and questions. At the end of the webinar, a survey will be sent out. Please fill that out to let us know how we are doing. If you have any suggestions for future content that you would like to see. If you would like to view past webinars, those are available for requests at the following link. Today's agenda. Here's a brief overview of what we will be going over in the webinar today. We will talk about the benefits and accessibility of dashboards, how we can monitor them in real time, the suite of dashboard bundles that Navient has designed for your benefit, how you can design your own dashboards based on your business needs, and how you can share them inside and outside of OnBase. Dashboards present timely and personalized business data using charts, graphs, scorecards, and maps. Do you wish there was a way to graphically display data in OnBase for reporting purposes? This module has been enhanced quite a bit since its initial release in OnBase 14. Anyone who needs interactive, real-time reporting surrounding data contained in an OnBase system will benefit from reporting dashboards. I'm seeing a question that this, is this going to be recorded for later? And yes, it is. Please contact us at the end of the presentation and we'll be sure to get you that copy. So to continue with our overview, sales managers, process managers, and executives who require detailed and dynamic views of their business data can, through an interactive graphical display, immediately view that data and how it relates to other meaningful data, allowing them to quickly make decisions, look at trends, or generate moment in time snapshots of data for historical purposes. In the Unity client, the reporting dashboards module allows you to configure basic pie charts and bar graphs, as well as gauges, pivot tables, maps, and a date range pincher, all giving you the ability to identify relevant information at a glance. Some reporting dashboard highlights include a point and click dashboard designer, sharing dashboards with other on-base users, interactive dashboard items, which allow users to dynamically update, filter, and drill down into specific business data, displaying actions that allow users to open related documents, workflow queues, work view objects, and folders, the data provider wizards for workflow and document retrieval that allow you to create data providers with ease, granularity and security and permissions, 
the ability to export dashboard data to Excel spreadsheets, uploading dashboards directly into OnBase as an image. Some of the benefits of dashboards are providing users with a self-service reporting tool while continuing to respect database security policies, making complex data easier to understand by providing a graphical view of business activity and system health, minimizing delays in decision-making by presenting relevant data for analysis in real time, promoting process improvement by highlighting trends and potential bottlenecks, and reducing IT costs by allowing business users to create their own views of process and performance data. Real-time monitoring. The most value of a reporting dashboard is the ability to measure. Why measure process performance? Because if you don't, all your process analysis and management efforts are a waste of time. You don't have control over the things that really matter and organizational decision-making can only be suboptimal. The only reason for doing process analysis improvement and management is to improve organization performance in meaningful ways. Without measurement, we don't know if there is improvement. We don't know what is meaningful. The Navient Dashboard Bundle. Now, after reviewing all of the benefits and how powerful this module can be, I have some awesome news for you. If you currently have a service level agreement with Navient and you own the reporting dashboards module, then you are entitled to the Navient Dashboard Bundle. This is at no additional cost and is included with your SLA. This bundle includes the services of importing them into your environment. We have crafted a wide variety of reports that can be easily imported into your OnBase solution and begin making an impact on your organization. We encourage you to reach out to the support team at Navient to get the ball rolling on this bundle. CCG's very own Jen Siegel has created almost 50 pre-configured reports covering multiple different items. The first one that most people are going to likely gravitate to is the licensing report, which shows the peak license usage by hour. And it is conveniently named as you'll see soon, NAV07, peak license usage by hour. If you do not have an SLA with Navient, but are still interested in the reports bundle, please reach out and engage with your account manager for details on what this could look like for you. And now we're gonna do a quick demo. I'm gonna transition over to our OnBase system. All right, so to view our dashboards, we're going to go from the Unity client to the reporting button. The Navient custom reports are in a shared folder. This is known as a category. And in the Navient dashboard bundle, our dashboards are purposed around two main objectives. One is identifying the state of your data, and two is showing the configuration information of your environment and its modules. First, let's start with identifying the state of data. This shows the data in different visual representations, so you can see how your system is being utilized by your organization, as well as what may need attention or cleanup. Now, just keep in mind, this is in a dev environment. Not everything is going to be as um, robust as it will be in a lot of production environments. So some of the numbers may look a little low. But first, let's start with our email distribution history. Yeah. Right here, this tab, uh, you'll see I have a number of tabs open and I can keep those open and add more or just X out at any time or open them in a new window. So the email distribution history displays emails pending and emails sent in a given time period. It lets me look at the emails from this past month, which I've set in my parameters. If I wanted, I could change this date range from, say, the beginning of the year to today's date just to see uh, what the volume is that's going out of OnBase uh, for this current year. The next one I want to highlight, which we talked about before, is the peak license usage by hour. 
this shows the maximum number of licenses consumed during the specified reporting period for each tract license type. This information can be used to evaluate if additional licenses may need to be purchased. Uh, to be able to view this, you have to have a certain configuration setting, which is the log license usage, which is enabled in OnBase configuration. If you need help with that, then just reach out to support and we can take care of that for you in less than five minutes. Uh, so this dashboard tells what the maximum number of licenses being used at a given time is to see if you are reaching the threshold of your license count for a particular module or user type license. This way, uh, you'll know if you will need uh, or possibly need to move around licenses that are on users that aren't in on base or are no longer with the organization, um, or if you need to purchase additional ones. Next, we're going to move to the configuration activity by user. This displays configuration changes made by users for a given date range. Again, this is uh, for the month of June, but you can change that parameter at any time by going to the parameter option up at the top. Um, so this is useful if, for say, you're a system administrator and you have other people who are making changes in your system. Uh, you can't monitor or you know, hear from everyone after they made every change, after every keyword they've updated, after every user they've created, after every document that they've edited. This allows you a full overhead view that you can view at your uh, leisure just to see what's going on in your system. Next, I'm going to highlight, uh, for those of you using Autonomy Idle, we have an idle pending processing status. Uh, so this will show the total number of items that are queued for autonomy idle, and it can show the total number of items failed um, and the different statuses. And for those of us who are not familiar, I have a key that shows what each number means. And as you can see, I have uh, quite a large number of failed documents, so I should probably go take a look at that. So that's just a small example of some of our um, data-based uh, reports. Now I'm going to show you some configuration information. So the first one that I want to highlight is our security overrides. Security overrides displays security keywords and indexing limits assigned to user groups or directly to user accounts. Security keywords apply to users from user group membership and document types with override privileges assigned to user groups. So in this table, I have every username and the level that a security keyword is applied. In this case, I'm using an employee ID that's equal to their username. That way, they can only see documents that are related to their username. I also have the different document type override privileges that override all, any of those security keywords and what document types they are for and what user groups they apply to, as well as security group or sorry, security keywords that are implemented at a user group level. Next, let's go to the document type keyword configuration. And this one is just going to give me a full audit, essentially, of what keywords belong to what document type. Rather than going into on-base configuration to see that, I can just go right in the Unity client and I can view every document that I want. And I can also add filters so that I can look at specific document types. Additionally, we have report number 28, user accounts. This lists the basic metrics for all active user accounts, the, um, the name, the email address, just so you can make sure that, they, sure that they have an email associated with an account so that they can receive emails from the distribution service when they were last logged on, if their account is locked, if a password was changed, just so you can keep auditing that. And last, I'll go over a couple of configuration uh, dashboards that are workflow based. So for our reports for 44, 45, and 47, these are all related to workflow. So um, in here, I can view all the notification recipients that I have, the types of notifications, the life cycles they apply to, 
the type of notification, and who they would go out to. Additionally, I have my workflow load balance methods. If I have a workflow that is a load balance, uh, that has load balance queues, it shows that information here, as well as you know, queues that are not balanced. And lastly, I have workflow properties. And this is a uh, sort of inventory of all the rules and actions that exist in my workflows. So we are always looking for requests regarding module specific dashboards. If you are looking for a way to get a specific dashboard view for a module that you use a lot, we always invite you to reach out with suggestions or ideas that you may have for your reports. All right. Now that you've seen what some configured reports look like and are capable of, let's review how to create your very own unique and beneficial reporting dashboard. Via the OnBase configuration module, you can grant different types of access for your users. None with the aptly named No Access. These users would not even know dashboards existed inside of your OnBase system. Full access. These are your dashboard administrators. Users under this category will have access to the admin tools, including purging, refresh rates of dashboards, and making the dashboards public. And finally, user access. Members of the user group with this access can view dashboards they have been assigned or that have been shared with them. Additional settings under this group can give you a bit more configuration control. Knowing where to start. Just like with a great workflow process or work view setup, you're going to need to understand and design what you're going to build before you can even start with the first click or keystroke. Here are some key questions to ask when creating a reporting dashboard. Number one, who has access and types of access? What data do you need to see? Current versus historical or on-base data versus external data? Do you have an example report of the data or report layout? How you want to see the data? What filters you need to drill into the data further? What rules do you want to apply to highlight data conditions? Where is that data located? And what user inputs are required at the time of running the dashboard? And now that we know what we want to measure, let's configure a report. To configure dashboard reports, you're going to log into the Unity client, select the dashboards button in the ribbon. From there, you want to go to the Administration tab in the Dashboards menu. Each report consists of one dashboard view, at least one data provider, and an optional category. Data providers are just that. They provide the data to the dashboard. We will go over the possible providers in a few slides. Dashboards are the visual representation of what you are making, and categories are for grouping the reports into a Windows folder-like structure. As you can see from the slide, there are multiple types of data providers. First, a custom SQL query, where you can write the SQL query yourself and connect to external data sources. A document query. This data provider gives you keyword information about documents stored in the system. Workflow inbox, which gives you information about items currently in a workflow. The rest of these bullet points on the slide have very similar descriptions, all within the Unity client, as tooltips as you are choosing the type of data provider that you will be making. Data providers can be used multiple times. So if you need the same information in different dashboard representations, you do not need to duplicate your data providers. Additionally, because you can use more than one data provider in a single dashboard, you can get all the information that you need from multiple sources for the report you are attempting to make. 
the data providers run with a read uncommitted isolation level. So you will not end up locking your tables just to see what is going on in the system. And for those of us who do not speak SQL, effectively, that means you are using read only access. If your end user shouldn't have access to data from a specific data provider, not granting it to this user group means they will not have access to it. You should be aware if they have access to a dashboard that normally uses data from a provider, they will not even see the specific part of the dashboard that uses that provider. Custom SQL queries. This data provider type is extremely powerful. Use it with caution. Talk to a DBA. The database is the heart and soul of your on-base system. Please do not tinker with it lightly. Now, say your DBA is all excited to create you the perfect data provider that brings you back exactly what you need to allow you to create the most amazing pie charts. Except, what tables or columns should they even be using? Highland comes to the rescue with a 143-page PDF of critical tables and keywords called Database Reporting Guide, which you can get a copy of out on Community. Also, Attached to this presentation and available upon request is a document containing sample data providers and dashboards. These are SQL templates that you can make applicable to your solution. Please let me know if you would like that. The dashboards themselves have multiple different ways to display the data, a few of which include pivot tables, standard grids, choropleth maps, and my favorite, pies. Each dashboard can have many of these widgets. Each widget can be assigned a different data provider. One of the neat things about putting together these dashboards is you are seeing live data as you build out the display. So you are seeing the end result before you save your changes. And that allows you to tinker as you want to be able to refine the charts and dashboards just the way that you want to see them. And once again, you must give the user groups access to the specific dashboards that you would like them to be able to use. Back to that first administration pane, after clicking into the dashboard button on the ribbon, we have some administration tools. You can purge log history for configured dashboards, data providers, and a general history of executions. You can import all the parts needed to get dashboards up and running so you don't have to configure them for yourself. However, we have found the process to be labor intensive, so please be prepared. A new feature that came in OnBase 16 was the ability to configure external databases, letting OnBase connect with the custom SQL query, allowing you to view your reports all in one connection. And now I'm going to do a quick demonstration of creating a very simple dashboard. All right, so I'm currently in one of our virtual machines. I'm logged in as a manager and I'm in uh, the dashboard administration panel, which I accessed just right from the dashboard gallery and I clicked on administration. I already have my data provider created and that, that data provider is for a workflow inbox. It's pointing to an AP invoice approval workflow and I just want to be able to run sort of um, diagnostics on that workflow. I want to see what is in that workflow. I want to see where things may be getting hung up, what belongs to certain users, the number of documents that are in each queue, and be able to kind of forecast uh, what needs to get done. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new dashboard. I'm going to choose the new dashboard. I'm going to call this AP Invoice Workflow Diagnostics. Here I could put in a description for my users to see, uh, you know, what um, the purpose of this dashboard is for. Um, I can choose an icon here if I wanted, similar to a workflow. I'm going to keep the dashboard refresh rate at zero. I'm going to click next. 
I'm going to choose my data provider here. I can create a new data provider from this area, but I already have that set up. Click Next. I can add who is going to have access to this dashboard here by selecting the users within my system. And this looks all correct to me, so I'm going to press Finish. And that's going to bring us to our dashboard uh, configuration layout. So let's make a couple of uh, charts and grids and all that good stuff now. Uh, the first thing I like to start out with is a grid. And in that grid, I want to view the vendor name, um, the vendor number. I want the invoice number. I'll choose the workflow status. That way I can see what uh, the statuses of every workflow, or sorry, every invoice. And I see some of these are on hold. So I want the hold reason. So I can view why it's on hold. And let's say I want the invoice amount. I'm going to go in and change the name of this to uh, the list view of all invoices in the workflow. Nice and easy, simple to read and monitor. All right, so I'm happy with that one. And let's say I want to add in a pie chart now. So for the pie chart, I kind of want to just see a visual representation of the percentages of uh, documents in each queue. So for that, I want my uh, life cycle. That's going to set the stage for me. And then I want my queue names as the argument. Nice and easy. This shows uh, each queue within the life cycle and how many documents are in that queue. And uh, showing I've got three in my initial queue, um, you know, two in our hold queue, and that relates over to here too. I can see that and I can see the reasons for that so then I can follow up with the correct people. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that one. And last, let's add a chart. And I don't want the chart to be down here. I want it to be somewhere up at the top. And I kind of like having it nice and large. So I'm going to do that. All right. Let's see. What can I do here? I want to use my invoice number as my value. Let's go with the vendor name for my argument. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so this will show me the invoice number or you know, the vendor name and how many invoices I have for that vendor. So uh, I owe the utilities company two invoices. I owe Navian three invoices. Uh, one, two, three, four, five company, I owe one invoice. And I'm pretty happy with this as a, my nice simple design. So after that, I'm just gonna save and close. We'll go back to our dashboard gallery. And here we are. All right, oops. Sorry about that. So now let's talk about exporting the dashboards. If you're currently using the reporting dashboard functionality, you know how extremely useful it can be to provide oversight and transparency in literally any section of your business process and have the ability to export these dashboards as well. 
Now with the Unity Scheduler, we can schedule the export of any of your dashboards, adding yet another great way to flex the capabilities of reporting dashboards, making them easy to share with executives and personnel outside of your OnBase environment. A couple of items of note that I want to be sure to mention before we jump into exporting a reporting dashboard via the Unity Scheduler. This is more or less an out with the old and in with the new type of situation. If you are not currently leveraging the Unity Scheduler, it is recommended that you start incorporating it into your environments. As of OnBase 18, the Workflow Timer service has been deprecated and is no longer available. Legacy timers will only execute using the OnBase Client Classic workflow functionality. As of OnBase 21, when it happens, the OnBase Client Classic workflow functionality is being deprecated and legacy timers will no longer function. For this reason, it is recommended to create new timers using the Unity Scheduler and to convert existing legacy timers to Unity Scheduler times. So I have a quick demonstration here of how you can do that. Oops. All right, so I want to show you what the dashboard I will be exporting as a report looks like in OnBase. The key thing to note here is the parameters for this particular dashboard. I have two separate ones. I'm going to put in a date range, and then I'm going to put in the users that I want this data on. Now we're going to jump over to the management console and get started. Uh, so the first thing is to create a task group. And as I was saying before, this is a great way of keeping things organized. This way, any tasks that I have for exporting dashboards can all be in the same group and executed by the same service. Now we're going to create the task. We'll give it a name. I'm going to assign it to a task group. Click Next. Choose the type of task that I want to create. And I'm going to choose to archive the document here. Um, if, if I wanted to archive the document, it would go in on base as that document type. But I'm going to save it to a network location here. I'm going to choose the file name that I want to save it as. And I, I can set some additional parameters, such as the date and time, who created it, the data provider, et cetera, for how uh, it's named. And I'll choose to just throw this on my desktop for the location. I'm going to overwrite the existing file if it already exists. I'm going to choose the data providers that are being exported. And then I'm going to choose the uh, date range. Here I can choose if I want to include or leave out some of the user login activity um, options that are in that dashboard, and I can include the column headers in the sheet as well. Add in our user group. And here we can set the interval. Uh, so this is a really cool option. You can select, say, you know, the first Sunday or third Monday or fifth Friday of every month. And this can be very useful for uh, tasks that get executed in conjunction with something like a pay period. You can also select individual days throughout the year for tasks or exports to be executed on. For example, selecting all of the holidays of the year. But bottom line, these configurable templates make the scheduling process a lot less painful and are easy to manipulate and configure. Um, so let's just go with a monthly task, um, which is the last day of the month. So if we select the task group that we just assigned this new task to, we will see it appear within the view pane. 
I also wanted to show you that both of these task groups have their own service assigned to them. So uh, after this, I'm going to go to my services. And you can see I have the Unity Scheduler dashboard service and the Unity Scheduler Finance workflow, which are showed in those two tasks. And they're running as services on my uh, app server. It's a great way to keep organized. Um, you can also prefix the names just for your own ease and organization. And here's what it would look like after the export. It would look very similar to one of those list views that we created in the dashboard. All right, so I'm going to open up the floor now to see if we have some questions. Okay, so one of the questions I'm seeing, uh, I am assuming that they are querying a SQL database, but do you have these also available for an Oracle database? Um, I believe you can connect to the Oracle database, um, but most of the, the dashboards that I showed were um, from preset on-base data providers that were configured um, just from the simple uh, clicking options in the data provider. I could choose you know, the document types, the uh, workflow items, work view items, uh, et cetera. Another question I see, is there a cost for these additional reports? Um, so if it's a pre-configured Navient report, it comes included in the bundle. Um, if you are trying to create your own report and are having a little trouble getting things stand up, stood up, then you can use uh, you know, Navient support to help you get something standing. If you want something created from scratch, um, I would advise you to reach out to us and out to us and give us your suggestion and we can decide if that is more project work or if that would be covered under your SLA. Any other additional questions? All right, well, if you do have any questions after this, please reach out to uh, the support team and we are more than happy to. Um, get right back to you. So our next webinar is yet to be announced, but please look for announcements on that. It should be announced very soon for the next month. And I also want to highlight the Navient Summit, October 21st to the 22nd at the Wilderness Hotel and Convention Center in the Wisconsin Dells. You can reach out to your account manager for any information on that if you don't have it. And again, I just want to thank you all for joining us today as, as we explored reporting dashboards. Remember, if you have a suggestion for a future webinar topic, or if you would like to inquire about Navient hosted training for your organization, just call or email Navient support. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day and week. Thank you very much. Take care.